All right, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to do a starter motor current draw test. We're going to use the VAT40 machine. It's a little bit of an older model, but that's not a big deal. Uh, it works extremely well. So we're going to go over a couple of the uh, setup procedures that we have to start with. So the purpose of this test is to find out how much current our starter motor is drawing from the battery when we crank our engine over. Um, on average, if it's a four cylinder or a small engine, you're looking right around 150 amps. Uh, the larger the engines, the V8s and diesels, you're going to go upwards of roughly 300 amps of current. So this test is going to actually, this uh, VAT40 is going to measure that for us. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook this up and I'm going to show you how that's done. So the first thing we need to start off with is we have to make sure that the VAT40 is set up correct. Okay, this one's old, it's a little beat up, but it still works perfectly fine. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure my load increase knob is turned all the way to the off position. Okay, I don't want that to be on. I don't want any form of load to be put on the battery while I'm performing this test. So I'm going to leave this alone. Just make sure that it's in the off position. All right, the next I'm going to come down here. This is my bolt selector. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this knob is turned and pointed to internal 18 volts. That's INT 18V. So internal 18 volts. My field selector switch right here, this has to do with my targeting system, so this is not a big deal. We're going to leave this alone for the most part. It's a momentary switch in both the A and B position, so normally it's going to be in the off position. So I'll just leave that field selector alone. The test selector, I want to make sure that this is pointed all the way over to the starting position. My knob's a little busted, but it's okay. So all you got to do is just turn it to the far left, so it's pointing at the starting position. Now notice, it's got a red and a green on that starting position. What this is a reference to is it's referring to the red scale right here on my amperes for my current gauge and then the green scale right down here for my voltage. Okay, the colors are a little bit off because they're faded over time but red is for the high amperage scale, green is for the high voltage scale up on the top. Okay, so next we'll go ahead and we'll hook it up to the vehicle. All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my two clamps that I have off of this machine, off of the VAT40, I'm gonna hook them up positive to positive, negative to negative, okay? So I come right over here, my positive terminal's right there, I'm connected, my negative's right there. After I got those two leads connected, the next lead I'm gonna go to is my green amp clamp. That's this guy right here. This is an inductive pickup clamp, so this goes directly around the wire that's leading to the starter solenoid. So this is going to go around the power wire that's going to supply the heavy amount of current from the battery down to the starter motor. What happens is as the electricity travels through the wire, this wraps around that wire, it's going to pick up on the magnetic field that's generated by current flowing through the wire. As it does that, it's going to then register a reading on our current gauge that is on the bat 40. So now Magnetic fields are highly permeable, so I don't have to worry about any form of insulation or stuff like that that's around my primary wire like this one right here. So I can wrap right around that. Just make sure that it closes complete. And what you'll also notice is right here, there's a green arrow. Pull this back off. There's an arrow located right here. You might be able to see it. This is gonna go around the large wire. Arrow points away from the battery towards the starter motor. Okay. All right, now that we got our gauges set up, okay, our cables are connected to the battery, positive to positive, negative to negative. My inductive clamp is wrapped around the primary wire going to the starter solenoid. We take a look at our gauges. So right now, my volt gauge, remember I'm reading the blue scale up here, or the green scale, allegedly. It's pointing directly at, eh, a little bit less than 14 volts, so we're about 13.8, 13.7 volts, which is pretty good because I just had this battery on a charger. Now what we also want to take a look at is my amp gauge right here. Now what can happen is sometimes this needle will be deflected off to the left or it'll be deflected off to the right. If that's the case, we have to zero it out. So we got the zero adjust right here. All you have to do is turn this dial in the direction that you want the needle to travel to get to zero. So in this case, I'm going to turn it to the right and turn it clockwise until that needle points directly at the zero. Now that I got it, my amps are zeroed out, so now I'm good on that department. So the next thing we're gonna take a look at is we have to make sure that our engine cranks over 
but does not start. So this is the next part in the whole entire process. So for that, I'm going to go to the fuse junction box under the hood. All right, so here's a junction box located directly underneath the hood. So we're going to go ahead and pop this off. And what I'm looking for is I want to try to kill the fuel system. Uh, if I disable the spark, that's fine. The engine is not going to start. But the downside is the fuel system is still going to be working, so it's going to actually push gas into the engine and then pump it out, and it's going to get plugged up in the catalytic converter. And then we actually start it. That fuel and air can combust inside of the catalytic converter, causing all sorts of damage in the exhaust system. And I don't want to do that because catalytic converters can be expensive. So your best alternative is to try to block the fuel from entering into the engine. So in this case, uh, we have an EFI relay uh, for electronic fuel injection. We're going to pull that relay and that's going to disable the injectors so they don't spray fuel. The spark plugs will still ignite, um, but there's going to be nothing in there to light up, so it's not a big deal. So here's the cap, and if we take a look in the top, uh, let's see here. We're looking for uh, EFI or F heater, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull that relay, and then we'll disable our fuel system. So our relay is located right there, so we'll just pull it out. All right, now that we're all set up, and our engine is disabled so it won't start. We're gonna crank this over for five seconds. So we're gonna do a long five second crank and while we're doing this, we have to pay close attention to both the voltmeter gauge and our current gauge. We wanna look for a peak and then we wanna look for the average on the current. And we don't want our voltage to drop below 9.6 volts. So we'll crank it over for five seconds and we'll pay close attention and see what we got. Okay, so we got our reading both on our currents and on our voltage. Our voltage dropped. It stayed a little bit above 10.5 volts, which is a good thing. And then for our current, we were right around about 120 amps. So we pulled pretty close to 200 amps in the beginning, and then it dropped back down to about 120. So that's a good reading. This engine's in great shape. Starter motor's working perfect. So that's it. That's how we do a starter motor current draw test with a VAT40. Thanks for watching.